Describe me your company culture. Tell me what is the culture without thinking about what you were told about the culture that is supposed to be in place. Tell me what is the culture without looking at the values, whatever they have told you. Once I threw an idea to my manager, what about during induction? We don't tell about the company culture. We allow new joiners to experience it for a month. And after one month, we're going to ask them, tell me, what do you think? What is our culture like? Of course, that idea wasn't very well, very well received. Why not? Let's talk about culture today. Hi, I'm Sylvia, an organizational psychologist. And I talk about everything and anything related to human resources and human experiences. So today, let's talk about culture because this is something that is bugging me for so long, not because it's not true, but it's so complex. And what is happening now today is for whatever reason, I don't know who fed companies and HR with this idea that surveys, AI and tools are going to create and fix culture. Because all I see is when I go online, every single survey tools are about employee experience. So we merged everything together. Now it's everything in one bucket. So we don't even know what we are talking about anymore. Survey tools to fix your culture, survey tools, employee engagement survey to shape your culture, to shape your well-being, your shape your employee experience, to fix everything. Now, who told you people out there that surveys are going to fix anything? Surveys are not designed to fix anything. Survey is like a thermometer. When you, are, when you have a fever, you check the temperature and it tells you, yes, you have a fever. You already know that, but just as a confirmation. And based on that, you're going to have to find out what's the source of it. So it's a fever. So it's likely that you have an infection. This is what is causing fever in, in the body, right? But you cannot just go around and start applying some sort of medication because is it bacterial? Is it viral? You will have to apply different antibiotics and stuff. I'm not a doctor. I'm just, that's basic knowledge, right? So surveys are never going to fix or create a culture. It's a thermometer that you check the temperature with. And once again, you already know that you have a fever. You're just having a confirmation. So survey, I would really love everybody to understand that survey companies, these whatever is out there, they are selling surveys, they are selling their platform, they are selling their, their tech technology, but they are not going to fix your problem. Those are the thermometers. Okay. So when you have a cultural program, a problem, then you have engagement problem, when you have well-being problem, whatever problem we are talking about within organizations. And your answer would be, okay, we are going to sign up for this platform and we are good. Yeah, no, that's, just not, that's not how it works, okay? Because you've been conducting employee engagement surveys for the past 20, 30 years and nothing has happened. So it's not the tool. The tool is there to diagnose, to establish, to reaffirm, to confirm that yes, you have a problem, but they are, is not designed to fix it. You have to fix it. And let's talk about cultures today because culture is a big mishmash. Cup of tea. So cultural studies are very clear, yet they are extremely difficult. Why? Because it's like engagement. There is not one globally accepted or agreed upon definition. And I have problem with everything that is not clearly defined because you don't know what you need to work towards. Now, in this case, I always recommend companies define what culture means to you and work towards that and explain that to the workforce. So, um, the general idea or the general consensus on, on culture is consistent observable patterns of behavior. And what I always like to say, what you reward and recognize is what 
your value, then therefore that's your culture. So if you reward and recognize poor leadership, poor leadership is your culture. If you promote those managers everybody's complaining about, stealing the money from the staff, but yet they end up in a very senior position. That's your culture, right? Um, and an other problem with cultural, the cultural narrative is that you ask your employees and they can't tell you what is the culture or they all going to tell you something very different, which means it doesn't exist. Why? Because I have worked 19 years in the hotel industry, 16 and a half years with one company, and I can't tell you what was our culture. I just cannot define it for you. Sometimes we had this, sometimes we had that based on the people who were coming and going, based on the new systems, the new processes, the new strategic focus, the new, you know, plan. And this is what happens because everything is measured or designed in organizations, right? And in life. The car you sit in, the book you read, the, the mobile phone you use, your laptop, your house, the chair you sit on, the lights that you're giving you, you know, light. But employees' experiences. So therefore, there is no culture. Because culture comes from standards. And we know that in the service industry, or from the service industry. So I don't know when to people and organizations and HR and these culture applications talking about culture, what are they talking about when there is no standards that would reinforce the consistent, reinforce and achieve the consistent observable pattern of behavior? Because that's what culture is. We agreed on that kind of. Now, if, if I want to achieve consistent, which we always fail, consistent observable patterns of behavior. You need to put standards in, in there to facilitate that behavior. So this is what we do in the service industry, right? We have service culture. Therefore, we have a service culture that comes from service standards. So if you move from one brand to another, every brand has a different service culture. Service culture is the core of every hotel. So when you move from one brand to another, your first question is, give me your standards. I need to understand the service culture. That's it. Now, how come that with all these gurus in um, cultural narratives that they don't have standards and they are not talking about standards because the consistency fails because this is what you want to create, right? that every employee has similar experiences. Now, I'm not going to have the same because people, locations, etc. differ, right? But what you want is really to have similar experiences when it comes to um, HR processes, for example. So every employee should have a similar, very similar experience when it comes to onboarding. So that means we check in with them every single week during the first three months. We check in with that. We, we train them. Everybody has their detailed onboarding plan. Everybody's communicated, given a departmental trainer, etc., etc. The, the standards for leadership, the leaders doing A, B, C, the leaders' behaviors, A, B, C. And based on that, you design your training programs, your development programs, and the whole structure. Without standards, there is no culture because, and that's why you can see the variation in cultural assessments amongst locations and within one organization, the same, you can take one organization and you see that the departments differ because today culture and employees experiences are depending on the people who are there, their mood, our routine, our you know, how we do things, personal preferences, but that's not what organizations want, right? Because if you see these variations in one country, the, the onboarding would be great. In another country, the hiring process would be great. Why? We don't even know why, but it's not the same. It's always different. Why? Because we don't have a set of standards for human resources 
for their practices, their policies, the procedures that they have to follow. Therefore, they cannot provide the same experience because if you set a standard that if you are hiring from the first interview to the last interview and decision making must be within two weeks, you will have the same experience of candidates all across the globe. So you're not going to have to read that in on Glassdoor that in North America is great and in, in the Middle East, you know, I was waiting for three months somebody to even pick up the phone and let me know that it's not me. Standards, culture, what is your culture? We don't know, right? Um, so, and it also, if you put these standards, so when we design employees' experiences, this is what we actually do. We give a set of standards for HR to create those culture, looking at what is the culture they would like to create, what, are the, what is the employee experience they would like to create or give to their employees. And based on that, we design and augment the, the standards. So we have a set of standards, and, but, we, but we also customize it um, for companies. Because if you do that, it's very easy for HR to follow. Most of the time they are left to their own. They don't really know what they are supposed to do. So they do what they can and that's it. But when you have standards, it's easier and, and, you, and people need, cl need clarity. Ask any HR professionals. They would love to have these sets of standards. Okay, what do I need? And within that, you can play around, be creative. But the standard is that you must collect data on your um, employee tracking or application tracking to identify where people fall out during the process. And then you go and fix it. So there's the standard, one of the standards, right? Um, because then you are playing into employee or in this case, candidate experience that everybody should have the experience of, you know, easy, fast, quick service application process. That's your company culture, easy, fast, quick, and it makes sense. And then based on that, you design everything around it, whatever the company culture you want to, to create. And it, if you do that, and we're gonna close this video, um, if we do that, we also eliminate or reduce, not eliminate, the difference between, the disconnect between macro and micro culture. Because at the moment, there is no macro culture. Because nobody's asking the micro teams, the teams, those are the micro cultures, what to do or what to follow. So we don't have macro culture. It just doesn't exist. So what we have is millions of micro cultures within organizations that they operating like organisms, right? And, but if I work on that team, my opinion about what is the culture of the company is this. If I work in that team, what is the company, this. But that's not what we want, right? So when you put these standards, so basically you create the macro culture and that cascades down into micro. And what you have left with, ideally, um, is the personalities that are, you know, facilitating and shaping and, 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 and playing with, with those standards coming to life. So if the standard is that the manager has to provide feedback once a week or once a month, sit down with everybody for 10, 10 minutes, just an example, that will be done because there's the culture that we have continuous feedback and check in and face to face, not online, because we outsource that too. And it's not working. We have tried it in 2016, these online tools. Nobody used it. Can we have 10 minutes face to face? Why do you want me to use an online, online tool? Why are you outsourcing your employees to AI and technology? Instead of sit down with your manager 10 minutes every month, it's easy. So then you will have across the globe that everybody sits with their managers and then you survey that, you measure that. Because what you want to do is measure every single touch point as much as you can, or as many as you can. Um, that and then you see okay who is not who is the team leader who is that manager supervisor leader who is not sitting with the employees and then you go back hey you are going against other culture why but that's continuous so can we please move away from this culture narrative of a survey going to fix it a tool is going to fix it and everything is 
AI and technology based and nobody is talking to anybody anymore and we are talking about culture because what we're going to end up with when we ask our employees what is the culture well it's a soulless place that run by AI is this what we want continue with your tours